I'm trying to film the flies. So this is one of our baby bok choy. You can see some of the damage that we've been getting from various bugs. I think a combination of aphids and flea beetles, I believe. So we have a lot of flies and I'm not sure if it matters or it doesn't. I've read mixed things. Uh, what I've read says that it only matters if you have a, quote, excessive population. I don't know what that means, but this feels excessive to us. What we are going to do is we've ordered some nematodes that like to eat flies. And hopefully they will be Mother Nature's exterminator and they will take care of this for us. So these are something called assassin bugs that came as a free bonus with the nematodes we ordered. You sound excited, honey. Right? These are guess assassin what, bugs. Guess what we got? Guess what we got. I'm a good YouTuber. We got assassin bugs. So in addition to the assassin bugs, we also have some beneficial nematodes mm -hmm. that I'm going to put down. Basically we're going to dissolve them in water and I'm going to water them over the garden. This is what they look like open. I believe these are good for two weeks in the fridge. So what I'm going to do is put down half of each, um, divide that among all three of the beds. And then in two weeks, I'm going to put down the other half. This is the second application of this that I'm doing. And there was definitely a sharp drop off in the population of flies in the garden after I did this, but we've definitely still been having problems with what I think is flea beetles eating Mostly the lettuce, it's looking pretty sad over there. Um, but it seems like this was helpful and um, we're gonna just finish up what I have here because they're only supposed to live for about two weeks in the fridge after we got them. And it's been about that long. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them down. What you doing? I'm mixing the nematodes. That's a fancy watering can you got over there. $5 at Home Depot. So what we have here Looks like damage from what's called a cutworm. Uh, if you, this was kale. And if you see, it just kind of chops right through the stem and keeps on moving. So it's a really wasteful pest on top of one that takes out pretty much a fully grown, uh, well not fully grown, but otherwise totally healthy plant. So I think all of these little things here are their droppings. So it lives, very shallow in the soil, so I'm hoping that if I just dig around this plant, they should be able to find it and prevent it from eating any of the neighboring plants. So we're gonna have a look around. Oh, there he is. All right. <laughs> Okay. 
So this is the jerk that has been destroying our kale. So one other way to try to avoid uh, damage from cutworms is to put some protective plastic of some kind around the base of the plant. And we lost probably three or four peppers um, before doing this. And we put these red solo cups and yogurt containers and whatever else in here and put in some new transplants. And since then we haven't lost anybody. So probably next year, We'll just put these in in the beginning and hopefully avoid losing any plants. I am not sure if the tomatoes are safe at this point because their stem is thick enough, um, but we did pull a couple out um, from both the basil as well as the Swiss chard in the other bed. So they're definitely still around. Um, and we're going to keep an eye out and just kind of follow where we lose plants, hunt around in the dirt, try to get the cutworms out. And... Um, that's what we're doing, so hopefully that'll work. Anything else you want to say? Happy Easter. Happy Easter. <laughs> <laughs> Happy quarantine. <laughs>